Let's use this terrible economic crisis to question assumptions behind economic theory and to rethink the role of the state, finance, and austerity in promoting growth and innovation. The current financial flows in the world financial system are fundamentally regressive in a sense. They're largely going from poor countries to rich countries. Right? And it's creating a situation where a few countries like China, Germany, and a few others are managing to create large uh, trade surpluses. Um, uh, but at the same time, um, uh, those are largely being absorbed by what's one of the wealthiest countries in the world, the US, that's running very large trade deficits. And I think it's important to understand that um, that situation only arose from the late 70s onwards. And before that, we were in a different type of world where the U.S. was largely running trade surpluses and hence exporting capital abroad to uh, the developing world and to Europe and so on. And that makeup of, of, of global imbalances, uh, um, where the richer countries are running surpluses and supplying capital to the poor countries, has problems as well, but it's more developmental in the sense that um, typically, maybe this is less of a concern for Brazil right now, but typically developing countries, when they're going through a process of rapid industrialization, typically they run trade deficits. If they cannot, if they don't have the finance to run trade deficits, they often have to constrain the industrialization in one way or the other. Uh, the best example of that, ironically, is Korea, South Korea. Because South Korea, when it was going through its very intensive phases of industrialization in the 50s, 60s, and 70s, was actually running massive trade deficits throughout that entire period. Which, um, there's obviously other elements of their experience that made them successful, industrial policy, state capacity, and so on. But had the financial conditions not existed to allow them to run these massive trade deficits, those other aspects might have been constrained and curtailed. Um, so um, uh, I think we underestimate the importance of that uh, because we always think of Korea as some export success. And even if it was exporting successfully and even if it was moving into higher value-added industrial products in its export basket, uh, nonetheless, despite that success, it was still running very large trade deficits to the order of uh, uh, 10 percent of GDP for it. We, we've gone through a, a type of paradigm shift in the 70s where from the 80s onwards the US economy went into a deep uh, trade deficit essentially which was absorbing finance from the rest of the world and, and we have to understand the current epoch we live in ever since then uh, in that context where the US economy is essentially being a sink for finance. Uh, and. And in response to that, for every deficit, there has to be a surplus somewhere else. So it's driven a lot of economies to be producing surpluses. And we've come to have a certain uh, conventional wisdom now that surpluses are a good thing. Uh, but I think we have to be careful with that assumption because even though uh, China in that sense is quite exceptional uh, because it has been industrializing and growing very rapidly with large trade surpluses only in the last 10 to 15 years. Uh, before that, it was more like a typical developing country. Nonetheless, it has had its also special uh, characteristics that's allowed it to do that. One of which is, a, uh, is almost a wholly state-owned financial sector. More than development banking, a state-owned financial sector where private banking plays a very, very limited role. Uh, so, so effectively, you have <laughs> the majority of, of, the, of the banking sector is a development bank in, in, in the sense that it can follow and national development objectives. It has other characteristics as well, a relatively closed capital account and so on. But, uh, but, but uh, generally speaking, we have to be careful with the conventional wisdom that trade surpluses are necessarily the best strategy for industrial policy. Yeah.